programmes or for more information, go to newstalk.ie. Now, it's often the case that a novelist will base a work of fiction on real events, but far more rare when a work of fiction is apparently copied in real life. Jeb Harrison is the author of a novel called Hack, found himself in this very strange situation, and Jeb's on the line. Good afternoon, Jeb. Hi, good afternoon, good morning here. Uh, uh, so, would you, would you tell us, just in outline terms, the plot of Hack? It's essentially about somebody faking their own death. Well, yes, it's about an artist who realizes that the value of his paintings would be about 10 times as much more if he were dead than uh, if he's alive. So what he does is he fakes his own death to drive up the value of his paintings, and then he continues to paint in secret and uh, flood the market with his paintings, which are now worth many thousands of dollars, and uh, get rich. Okay, right. Now, on that thought, at the time uh, you first met Melanie Mills, um, Hack hadn't been, uh, hadn't been published. You were actually looking for a publisher and an agent. Correct. She, actually, she was my agent. Right. Uh, and and how, how, did you, uh, how did you come across her as an agent? I mean, how did you I, I came her? across her through Publishers Marketplace. She was listed um, as a literary agent and uh, had not been tag. The, um, there's a, a website called Writer Beware that will call out agents that are engaged in nefarious activities. And uh, she had not been tagged on that website yet. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought, sure, yeah, sounds great. And she was completely le- legitimate with me throughout our entire relationship. And, and, and did she have, you know, did you, uh, when you first came in contact with her, did you know much about her? Did she have any other clients, for instance? Yes, yeah, she did have a couple of clients and she had published, um, no, not herself, but her clients had published a couple of novels. So she was small time for sure, but um, hey, I was <laughs> ready to go with anybody. Yeah, well, no, but an agent who actually has clients who've been published, you know, that makes them an agent as opposed yeah, to anybody. Sure, and I know published. you're a novelist too, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, absolutely. So, yeah. so, uh, so uh, your initial contact with her, the first period of contact with her, uh, was that remotely, you know, was it a while before you met face to face? Oh, yes, it was. In fact, you know, had she had her druthers, we probably never would have met face to face, except that she lived in North Myrtle Beach in uh, North Carolina. And um, that's a vacation spot. So we were living in Connecticut. So we went down there for a vacation. And that's how I ended up meeting her. Uh, and uh, how old was this woman? She's probably in her 50s. Right. And, and did she seem, I mean, because, you know, as, uh, as agents do, they'll always make suggestions about redrafting a novel. Did she, did she, was it your impression she seemed to know what she was talking about? Absolutely. And she had some good ideas uh, regarding the novel. Uh, so then did she, did she get to the position with your novel where it seemed like uh, you might have a publisher? She did shop the novel. She shopped it to four different um, imprints and they all rejected the, the novel, and we were preparing to shop it uh, to a broader audience of publishers um, when she pulled her little stunt. Right, and that was that you got a message from uh, Melanie's assistant. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, did you know before that she had an assistant? Yeah, I did. Right. Yeah, I, I got emails from this person, Cat Baker, who I am sure is uh, Melanie herself. Mm. Uh, and what what did Kat have to tell you? Well, um, she managed a lot of the uh, interface with Melanie um, over email. And what Kat had to tell me this time when I was uh, inquiring about the revisions that I had made to the novel um, and I was looking for Melanie's feedback, I got the email from Kat that Melanie had been killed in a car accident in Germany. And uh, all bets were off and I was free to go find another agent. <laughs> uh, which, you know, obviously is a, is a kick in the teeth. You've got yourself an agent, you've gone through a redrafting process where there she's shopping it around, and then oh, you're kind of back at square one again. Totally, yeah. It's a big time kick in the teeth, but it did make for a good query letter. <laughs> uh, uh, now, when then after that did you first start to think there's something fishy about this? I did not think that there was anything fishy about it until... My new agent came across an article, actually on Writer Beware, that um, Melanie Mills, actually who, under the alias of Elizabeth von Hulsum, had turned up in Canada with relation to a writers' conference that she was 
putting on is that she skipped. She took all the uh, registration fees and skipped town. And that's how she um, attracted the attention of the law, the Mounties, actually, in Canada. And um, they tracked her down after a while. And at first, they did not make the connection between Elizabeth von Holleston, the person that was putting on the Writers' Conference, and Melanie Mills from North Carolina, who was also wanted by the um, authorities in several states for many different um, uh, laws that she had broken, including real estate fraud, but probably the most, <laughs> the most, the scariest one was that she was wanted for attempted murder of her own mother. Mm. And uh, what was the method of attempting to murder her mother? She uh, tried to run her over in her car and ended up pinning her against a, a concrete wall and breaking her pelvis. Ah. <laughs> uh, Melanie, it seemed then, had a long track record of, of various uh, various fraudulent activities. Yes, she did. And she had over 20 aliases. Um, and also, it, one of the more curious things about uh, her story is that she was a published novelist herself under the name, I think it was Lisa Hackney. Um, and she had published a novel, and it was based on, the novel was called Sins, and I haven't looked, I haven't tried to find it, and I really should. Um, and it was based on this idea that her mother had uh, faked her own death. And so she thought that her mother was dead, and then her mother comes back. So this theme of reincarnation was pretty uh, pretty uh, strong thread, I think, in Melanie's um, twisted mind. The thing is, is that Melanie never asked you for money or, uh, or tried to defraud you of anything. Uh, Not uh, at all. It, it would sound like that you, she genuinely uh, liked your book and perhaps it, it struck a chord with her. <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of the theory, uh, that she really uh, was inspired. <laughs> Uh, this, this whole idea of, uh, of you know, reincarnating herself. Um, so, yeah, uh, that, that's what makes it such a, a weird story. Uh, and it, it, uh, what's uh, the situation with Melanie now? The last I heard, she was in prison in Vancouver. Um, actually, actually I, I, she was in prison in Vancouver in that she had been uh, set free, and the authorities in the United States were trying to get her extradited so that she could stand trial for some of the various charges. And uh, I don't know the status of that. I have researched it somewhat, and uh, she seems to have dropped off the map. Uh, is it true she's been diagnosed as a schizophrenic? Um, well, she's yes. She uh, displayed a, quite a bit of, obviously, schizophrenic uh, behavior in my relationship with her. But, um, yeah, she... she went into court in Vancouver and wearing the orange jumpsuit. She had nothing on underneath, and apparently she decided to uh, remove the orange jumpsuit in the courtroom, um, and which, of course, prompted some psychological uh, mm. testing. Uh, <laughs> then again, uh, you don't really know uh, what that ha- have you uh, Have you been tempted to try and contact her? Uh, no. <laughs> I have not been tempted to try and contact her, and uh, I actually fear that she'll end up trying to contact me. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> if, she, if she does, Jeb, just keep your credit card in another room, uh, just in case. Uh, Jeb's book, Hack, is uh, you can get that, uh, you can look that up on Amazon.com if you'd like to find out more. Uh, Jeb Harrison, thank you very much uh, for talking to us today. We're going to take a break. After that, Single Life, it's pretty good, you know. Thanks for listening to this News Talk 106 to 108 podcast. To download other programs or for more information, go to newstalk.ie.